Hi there folks, my name is Dan Bell, I'm from Intigent, and today's video is going to be talking about using Roadmap in uh, Microsoft Project Online and Server. If you haven't seen Roadmap, it, it's a really great uh, feature in Project Online, and it can be used for a number of things. So, uh, first of all, it can create a high-level view of your organization's projects. You can connect directly to projects from multiple systems in your organization. When you add items to the roadmap, you can choose the most relevant items from each project to focus on, such as investments and deliverables. You can change the order to highlight the work that's most important to you. And you can also collaborate with others by sharing uh, the roadmap with existing users uh, in an Office 365 group or creating new sets of uh, stakeholders. The steps we're going to go through today are as follows. We're first going to create the roadmap. We'll then add a row and other row items and uh, connect it to Project Online. We'll look at sharing the roadmap with a group. We'll go ahead and add a key date to the roadmap, see how that's done. We will change status on some of the uh, row items that we have there. We'll remove a row item. And then finally, we'll delete the entire roadmap. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I am on the uh, Office 365 portal page here. I'm looking at my Office 365 apps. What I want to do is I want to navigate to um, the home page here for my roadmap feature. And what I want to do is click on the uh, launcher here, the app launcher, and then click on all apps, and then scroll down and find project. And there's project right there. I'll go ahead and click on that. And when I do, it will bring up project home. Okay, and what you can do is you can, uh, I'm not gonna talk about Project Home today, but you can save favorite items here so that they're uh, you know easily accessible for you to, to navigate to uh, every time. But uh, what we're gonna focus on here today is creating a roadmap. And you'll notice there's this create new button here, right here. When I click on create new, a couple of options, either to create a project or create a roadmap. We are going to create a roadmap. System will churn for just a moment. And then we'll be presented with uh, the roadmap screen here. And you can see it's initially titled Untitled Roadmap. What we're going to do is click on the link Untitled Roadmap, and it'll bring up the uh, Roadmap Details dialog over here. And we're going to call this, we're going to call that uh, Construction Initiative. OK, and there's our name. We'll go ahead and collapse that. Uh, so that that's just basically creating the roadmap. Now there's nothing in here yet. We have to add content to it. We have to add what are called rows and row items. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna add um, a row and connect it to Microsoft Project Online. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and click on add row. And notice up here in the right, it currently has untitled row selected. Now I could go ahead and type a name in here. Uh, the other thing I could do is when I eventually connect to a project, it'll automatically fill that in with the project name. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and put my name in here. We just start to type the name in. It'll bring up a pick list with names that begin with that. Click stuck myself here. And then I click the uh, connect to project button. And I have a couple options, a project and Azure board. So I'm going to select project here. If it doesn't have your project web app URL here, just go ahead and harvest it. Go to your project web homepage or, or something and get the URL all the way through the um, actual site instance here. In my case is PWA. Click on the check mark here. Looks good. All set to go. And what I'm looking for is a residential construction project. I just start typing the name of the project in and it brings up a list with similar named items. Go ahead and click on that. System will again churn for a moment. Find the project. Okay, and then a uh, great looks like we're yeah, it's found the project. What I want to do is actually connect to the project and I'm going to go ahead and connect on that green button there. And that will establish a connection to the project. There we go. So the connection has been established. Now the system is actually prompting me to add items to my row in the roadmap. So what I need to do is decide what items am I going to add to this particular uh, row item in the roadmap. So first of all, I, I typically like to add the project itself, and that way I have a bar, you know, a Gantt bar that represents the entire duration of the project. It's kind of like that level zero project summary task. So I will type in the project name again, residential construction project, and then just click on it and it automatically adds it to the list. Very simple. Now I'm gonna add some other items here that are part of the project. 
Yeah, we'll get a bunch of these in here. We're going to put our exterior finish. And then our interior finish. Then we have the dry in. Go ahead and add that. And then we have framing. And uh, put that one in there. We have foundation. Put that. And then the... Yeah, that's basically it. So I should have eight uh, items here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are all my items in the list here. Now, all I need to do is click that add button. Okay, great. So where is my stuff? Well, my my stuff is there. Uh, oh, oh, no, that's, we'll go back here. Remember I, I said we you could fill in a name. However, when you select a project, it's eventually going to pre-fill the name of the project. That's what I wanted. I actually wanted the name of the project, and it did pre-fill it for me. I'll click that X to collapse. Uh, so my stuff is where the where the project actually takes place. That's uh, back a little bit, but what I'm going to do is zoom all the way out to make it easier to see. Then I'm going to scroll all the way back here. There is my project. And remember, like I said, I wanted to add the level zero project summary task. So I, like I said, I typed in the project name and added the project itself. That gave me the overall duration of the project. And then I have the items, right, the stages, phases, however you refer to them, in my roadmap right there. Right, so looking good. Okay, let's move on. Now let's talk about sharing that roadmap with a group. You saw that when I created the roadmap, I specified myself as the owner. Now I'd like to go ahead and specify a mechanism by which other people can view it. Now there's a couple ways to do this and I'll only be able to demonstrate one of them and that's because once you add a group, you cannot remove the group. Uh, therefore, I'm, once I show one way, I can't back out and show the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on group members here. And then you'll notice the, the two options here. One is to create a group and one is to add a group. If I were to click on the link for add to a group, it brings up this uh, pick list here. And if I click on it, it'll bring up all the groups that are currently here in within my Office 365 environment. You can see all the groups here. And what I could do is I could easily just click on a group here like so and then click add. And that would give all the individuals part of that group access to this particular roadmap. And then I could subsequently add more people to that group. However, if I didn't want that group and I wanted to, but rather create a group, I click on create group. Then I go ahead and maybe I want Mr. Shackelford in here. I can click on Dan Shackelford and I could add more names here if I wanted to get a whole list of them up here, right? Type in, um, should have Barb Liner. And then I go ahead and click create. Now, we didn't see much happen, except you did see something up here happen. The uh, number of group members changed. If I click on this again, what you'll see is this. Now you see we have a group specified here, and the group is basically created automatically. These users are added to it, and the group is named after the name of the roadmap, which if you recall from an earlier step, I named the group, um, excuse me, the roadmap construction initiative. All right, so pretty straightforward. Okay, great, let's move on. All right, adding key dates to your roadmap. So there may be instances where you wanna add something uh, that you can see on this roadmap that's not part of a specific project, right? So it might be a, a date, maybe a team's onboarding that'll be a part of two different projects, something of that nature. Uh, adding the key date will allow us to do something like that. How do we do that? Well, basically, if we look here on the screen, you'll notice there's an add key date link. I click on that. It'll bring up a dialog box. And what I want to do is give the key date a name. Uh, team A onboarding, maybe. Or maybe it's going to be Team B in this case. Now I'm going to stick with this particular time period. Let's go back a ways, and maybe it's going to be in the February time frame, February 1st. And what is the status of this? We can go ahead and say it's on track. And then I can go ahead and click the uh, add key date button here. And then you can see there's the item that I just added, onboard team B. And again, this isn't tied to, it's not part or within a specific project. I didn't go into the project row and I didn't uh, go ahead and find the item within a project. Theoretically, this is going to be something that's outside of a specific project. It'll be part of multiple projects because you can add more than one project here. Okay, so that's basically uh, go ahead and adding my key date. All right, moving on, let's look at changing the status in a roadmap. So looking at the screen here, 
You'll notice the uh, couple of row items I have. I have the regional highway revitalization uh, row here, and this represents a single project. I also have residential construction project as well. And you'll notice that all the, the bars are the same color here. All my stages and phases are the same color. And in the real world, um, for the most part, when things are under in execution and the project's being uh, managed and tracked and so forth, these things are going to change status, right? And so basically... The product roadmap gives us a mechanism by which we can change the status. Now, what I didn't mention is, is as you, you connect these rows, meaning when we created this residential construction project, you notice that we connected to Project Online at that time. As the project changes, meaning you, you status it, dates change automatically and so forth, these items will move back and forth. Okay, so these items will fluctuate within your Gantt chart. That's great. So the timeline will reflect reality. However, the statuses will not change. The statuses you need to change manually inside this tool, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change a few of the status items right now. All right, so within my residential construction project, foundation has actually been poured. It's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and click on foundation, the bar, directly on it. And notice the uh, pop-up dialog comes here, some details information. The status, currently it's not set. I'm going to change it to done. That takes care of that. Framing and dry in are currently in progress. And let's set those both to on track. We don't anticipate any issues. Okay. Um, we do potentially anticipate uh, something at risk here. Right. And uh, so far it seems like this one's on track. Okay. Then they don't necessarily, you know, as long as everything as far as we're concerned, as far as the timeline is concerned, is on track, we can change all these to green okay initiation okay currently done in this project right this could be on track these others could be on track as well we might have something that's at risk here okay and and that's basically how i i can change the status so that now when other individuals look at this roadmap they can look at it quickly and and if you know Ideally, what we want to have is we want to have a legend that people can refer to. They can look at the legend and then they can quickly identify or look at things on this and say, okay, those things are on track. This thing's at risk. This thing's high risk and understand what things are managed, uh, what things are tracking okay and what things are in trouble. All right. Great. That concludes this particular segment. All right. Let's look quick, really quickly at the removing a row item. If you have something in here that uh, no longer is pertinent, you want to remove a row item, maybe replace it with something else. Really very simple process here. Uh, for instance, I want to remove this final acceptance, click directly on it. It brings up that, that little help dialog here with some basic information where you can change the status. There's an open details button at the bottom. Click on that. It'll bring up the details uh, dialog up here in the right. And at the very bottom, notice there's a remove phase button here. Go ahead and click on that. You'll get a confirmation, remove, and then the name of what you're trying to remove. And I can go ahead and click remove. And if you look here, just a little more information, final acceptance will be disconnected from the row. You can reconnect it at any time. We'll click uh, remove. And notice it's now gone. All right, so very, very straight process in uh, removing individual items here. All right, last uh, topic here with regard to roadmaps. What if you wanted to delete the entire thing? Maybe the entire program. You put a program here, the program's done. Uh, whatever it happens to be, it's done in this particular case. How do you remove it? Well, click on the label, the name. In this case, construction initiative. It brings up the details dialog in the far right. And similar to uh, de deleting the row items before, you'll have a delete button at the very bottom. Click on that and we get this dialog. Confirmation here, you're going to delete construction initiative. Deleting the roadmap will not delete any connected projects. So this is only destructive to the roadmap, not the underlying data. All projects will be disconnected. Any information you've added to this roadmap will be deleted. Click the delete button. And all that information is gone. Brought back to the project home screen. Uh, and there you go. We're back to exactly where we started at the very beginning. Hope you learned something about roadmap today. If you have any further questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact us. Look forward to hearing from you.